Dear viewers, this is our last episode for this season. Don't worry though, you can still find us online. And just so you don't miss me too much, here's a little heads up on what to expect in the news. There will be weather, maybe sun, maybe rain, but there will very definitely be strikes. <laughs> Have a good summer. Welkom bij de 26e en voorlopig laatste aflevering van Fans of Flanders. Op het menu deze week. André, een dirigent met naam uit Rusland, leidt ons rond in het Nationaal Orkest van België. Nadimir uit Chili ontfermt zich met passie over twee bruine beren in Oost-Vleteren. We breien een einde aan onze mini-reeks over de geschiedenis van Antwerpen. En Leo de Janeiro zwaait de kijkers uit vanuit Walibi. Speciaal voor expats, maar ook voor jullie. Gelukzakken van bij ons. Deze week trok Fans of Flanders naar het Nationaal Orkest van België, waar momenteel de befaamde Russische dirigent André Borreiko de plak zwaait. Borreiko wilde eigenlijk archeoloog worden, maar het draaide anders uit. Many good musicians, soloist, famous soloist, they start to conduct. And many of them are very disappointed that they didn't expect how difficult it is. When you stand first time in front of the orchestra, it's, it's like to come in a cage with the tigers, you know, because you, you don't know what to do, how to do, and theoretically you know what you should do, but you should feel it. Contact between musicians, you should create it. to make me a musician. It was a decision of my mother. I was born as an archaeologist. It was my dream as a small boy. Being four years old, I remember the day when the first cosmonaut Gagarin said his famous word, let's go, and make the first big step of the mankind to the outspace, to the universe. We're just interested in discovery. Uh, in a certain way, in my, in my later time as a, as a conductor already, I, I, I still a little bit archaeologist, musical archaeologist. Well, not many conductors are really uh, interested in the unknown repertoire, because what's mean for me, archaeologist in music? I'm looking for the less known or forgotten or unknown repertoire. It's the biggest dream of my life to find, let's say, another piece of Schubert or uh, another piece of Mahler or, uh, or Mozart even. And it's not impossible. Just last year, can you imagine, the library of my conservatory in St. Petersburg, because of the renovation, uh, they moved to another building. So behind the huge, huge 200 years closet, which was full of the books, and which w weight of this stuff was probably 300 kilo, nobody touched it, never, ever. But behind it, they found another score of Stravinsky. And people were looking for this score many, many years in all libraries, because we knew that this piece exists. He composed this piece, this piece has been played. And then the score get lost. And now it has been rediscovered again, you see? Unfortunately, I was not the person who looked behind this closet uh, with a flashlight. <laughs> I'm working actually all the time and when I finish my rehearsal I start to think about the next program, about the, some pieces I never played. What's happened tomorrow nobody knows, just I, I'm really happy to do it today and I want to say thank you to, to this universe, to the God, to everything that I, I, I've got this chance and I still have it. In het nieuws deze week. Where did the summer go? I 
I found it in Monaco, dancing in Mexico, sushi in Tokyo. I wanna be where you are, driving a classic car. Cuba is not so far, I can bring my guitar. Sunset, summer will be over soon. I'll see you when you get there, but until we get there, we'll be howling at the moon. Baby, are we there yet? Meet me at the sunset. Summer will be over soon. I'll see you when you. The get energy there. issue here in Belgium seems to be a bit of a difficult point. We have outdated nuclear power plants and plans for a biomass energy centre that would have a bigger ecological footprint than energy output. So you would think that wind energy would be a good solution. However, the Flems don't want windmills in their back garden. <laughs> in effect, the Flemish are fighting windmills. It reminds me of a character in a book I once read. In Expats tonen expats hun favoriete dier. Deze week zien we twee beren wiens broodjes met veel liefde gesmeerd worden door niemand minder dan hun Chileense oppasser, Nadimir. We geven iedereen de zonnegloed twee beren. De kleinste, een mannetje, Verros. Verros komt van de populatie achter de Pirineum in Spanje. Hij is geboren in een dierentuin. Elena is in Slovakië geboren. Tijdens de communistische regime waren veel beren gefokt om te schieten. Want dat betekent vroeger macht voor de mensen die kan beren doodschieten. Elena is een dier, we kan direct zeggen, is een mishandeld dier. Je kan niet lopen uh, snel dan een ber. Je kan niet uh, met jouw kracht tegen een ber, zeker niet. Ze uh, zijn slimme dieren, dus de enige manier om te werken met een ber is achter een tralies. Goed, goed. Stay. Goed. Oké, okay, ber. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Elena eet graag druiwitjes. Recht, recht, recht. Good boy, steady. Good boy, good boy. Verros is een spelvogel. Hij is bezig de hele dag met spelen en lopen en dingen zoeken en proberen te klimmen en graven. Eh, zoals een jongen, een puber, eh, 20 maanden. Elena is een volwassen oude vrouw, 20 jaar. Wat zijn wij voor de dieren? We zijn goden. Eh? We kunnen op twee voeten wandelen. De dieren nooit. Die moet vier voeten op de grond. We kunnen vuur maken, een volonté, overal. Eh? De dieren nooit. We grepen de vuur niet. Wij zijn goden voor de dieren. Maar we hebben vergeten in de laatste jaren wat betekent die. Dat betekent we moeten zorgen, we moeten die dieren van nu preserveren. We moeten brengen die dieren voor de toekomst, voor de kinderen. In een bepaald moment van mijn leven ik ben ik een beetje teleurgesteld van de mensen. Want met de mensen ik heb ik niet dezelfde gevoel als de dieren. De dieren gaan nooit liegen naar mij, ga nooit verraden naar mij. Ik verwacht een reactie van een dier. En voor mij, een buitenlander, een nieuwkomer in België, de wand is echt sterker geworden bij de dier. Dancing in Mexico, sushi in Tokyo. I wanna be where you are, driving a 
drive in a classic car Cuba is not so far I can bring my guitar Baby, are we there yet? Meet me at the sunset Summer will be over soon I'll see you when you get there, but until we get there, we'll be howling at the moon. Baby, are we there yet? Meet me at the sunset. Summer will be over soon. I'll see you when you get there, but until we get there, we'll be howling at the moon. Ah Voor de wablief van deze week bestelde Chris geen met kaas, maar ene met hesp. 200 gram hesp, alstublieft. Hmm. I just ordered 200 grams of ham. We are at the butchers, officially called the slager, but not in Flanders. Here everybody says the bin hower, the one who hacks bones. Thank God these bones aren't ours. But there's more true Dutch Flemish to be found in the piece of meat I just ordered. You see, ham is called ham in Dutch, but not in Flanders, because in Flanders we say hesp. And sometimes we act as if we're dyslexic and say heps, hesp, heps. Now we do that with other words as well. Think of wasp. In Dutch that is wesp, but sometimes we say weps. So wasp, weps, heps, hesp, wop, wop. Ach, the wob. That makes me think of the very first time we met. It seems a hundred years ago. And I explained wobblief the wob leaf to you. Do you remember that? That's what this whole thing has been about. Me explaining incomprehensible things and still making them sound as if they're very familiar. Hope you liked it as much as I did. Stay safe now. Salut! Where is the summertime? Take me back to Hawaii. Skyscrapers in Dubai. In recent years, smoking has been banned in trains, planes, restaurants, bars, offices, pretty much any public space. And now the coastal towns here in Belgium are suggesting a complete prohibition on their beaches. They are of opinion that it will stop rubbish accumulating in the sand. That'll work. Fans of Flanders maakten een driedelige reeks over de opkomst en de val van Antwerpen. Deze week brengen we het laatste deel of hoe de ondergang van de ene de opkomst van de andere inluidt. The higher you rise, the harder you can fall. And it is a fall. Or is it a new beginning? We'll see. Let me take you back to Antwerp one last time. Previously, we talked about the new Spanish governor for the 17 provinces, Alexander Farnese. He launched a pretty successful military campaign to reconquer this part of the Low Countries that remained the rebellious Union of Utrecht. And it was this military campaign that would bring the Spanish armies to the city walls of Antwerp in 1584. The 3rd of July, the siege of Antwerp started. William of Orange would not live to see the outcome. He was shot dead seven days later in Delft by a fanatical Catholic called Balthazar Gerard. Farnese wanted to cut the city of Antwerp off from its supplies. And he was pretty successful in this endeavor. Dendermonde, Ghent, they all fell into Spanish hands. So in the end, there was only one route left to keep the city of Antwerp from starvation. The River Scheldt. Farnese orders to build a blockade across the river, consisting of a bridge formed by 32 ships going all the way from Fort St. Philip over there to Fort St. Mary over there. 
The rebels launch desperate attacks at this bridge, but without any luck. And in their attempt to regain control of the Kawastan's attack, they are horribly defeated. Farnese writes several letters to the city officials asking for their surrender. They politely decline. But as the shortage of grain grows and leads to more and more problems in the city, they had to give in. Several months later, in August of 1585, Antwerp finally had to surrender. And Farnese entered the city with the Spanish armies through the St. Joris port, or Gate of St. George. Antwerp had finally fallen. You can be sure the people of Antwerp suffered the consequences for their arrogance. The Dutch fleet came too late for the rescue, so they decided to block the river Scheldt to prevent overseas trade to reach the now again Spanish Antwerp. Every Protestant in the area had four years to make a final choice. Convert to Catholicism or leave the city. This led to a massive flow of refugees headed north to cities like Vlissingen, Rotterdam and Amsterdam. And most of these guys were intellectuals or rich merchants who put to use their money and know-how in these regions. And we know from archival records that at the origins of the famous VOC, the big Dutch trading company of the 17th century, were people who actually fled from Antwerp. So in a way, the Dutch Golden Age found its origin here in Antwerp. And at the risk of being too arrogant, you know, Antwerpen is the stad. And the rest, sparking. Deze laatste aflevering van Fans of Flanders zit er bijna op. Maar Leo de Janeiro zwaait zichzelf uit vanuit zijn zelfgekozen typische Vlaamse setting. I've been doing a lot of Flemish things during the season of Fans of Flanders. Today is the last episode and they let me decide and I decide to be in Walibi, which is in Wallonia. But it doesn't matter, I'm so excited. Let's go. <laughs> it's my first time in a horse. One small French fries and and she pays. She pays. Oh, uh, we said uh, okay. okay. Thank you. I just got a call from Canvas and we're really spending too much money. It's it's not even about Flanders. Of course it is about Flanders. I will prove you. Let's go. The roller coaster was invented by a German guy called Anton Schwarzkopf and he was born only 500 kilometers from the Flemish border. Can you imagine? <laughs> French fries, typical Flemish, you see? Wow! I don't know what it is, but I want to get it. It is amazing. You can even see Flanders from here. And the world's all right with me. Just want to look at you. And I know it's gonna be. Come on, come with me. A lovely day.
was the last episode of Fans of Flanders. I had a lot of fun and I hope you enjoyed it too. See you next time.